Welcome to Raptor Talk Investigative. I'm Marites Vitug. Joining us is Ambassador Luis Cruz, the former Philippine ambassador to South Korea. Welcome to the show, Ambassador Cruz, and thank you for making time for us. We know uh, you're now based in Canberra, and we have a two-hour time difference, but we really need to talk to you about the historic meeting between President Trump and, and North Korea's leader Kim Jong Un, which takes place tomorrow. So, sir, you've been, you've known, you've lived in South Korea. You've watched these developments. What, why should the Philippines care about tomorrow's meeting between Trump and Kim Jong Un? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me, Marites. No? You're most. Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, why should the Philippines uh, care? I think what is uh, what has been projected in the media is that uh, well, it's always between the U.S. and uh, and uh, uh, North Korea, no. But the truth about it is uh, the U.S. is the de facto leader of uh, the 16 uh, uh, nations, no, Com comprising the United Nations Command, and these nations sent uh, troops, combat troops, during the Korean War. And the Philippines is one of the 16 nations. So meaning, uh, what we have at the moment, you know, since 1953, is uh, the armistice. And because of that, the armist uh, because of that, the United Nations command has not been disbanded yet. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning, aside from the U.S., the Philippines maintains a a, well, shall we say, token military force in South Korea. Although the U.S. has 28,000 uh, uh, troops there, pero ang Philippines, uh, we have uh, honor guards as, mm. uh, a part, as part of that United uh, Nations Command. And uh, during this last uh, 60 years, whenever there is uh, uh, negotiations at Pamunjom between North Korea and the uh, United Nations Command, uh, there are times when the Philippines sits in the panel by virtue of our membership in that United Nations Command. Even if it's so, yeah. So if we so, supposing uh, yung outcome nitong talks nila no the the summit say if the outcome is not too favorable and if uh, worse comes to worse uh, we go to war the U.S. goes to war. And the, the coalition forces will be asked to send troops again. Is, is, is that, and, yeah. And the Philippines is included there. How uh, many honor guards do we have, sir, in... Uh... Uh, it's just a token presence. Uh, uh. We have three. And then, uh, uh, of course, the head is the defense uh, attache. And then his assistant. Uh, so five, five in all. So, sir, uh, what do you... Yeah. Every every uh, month, uh, the uh, 16 ambassadors of uh, the countries representing the United Command, the Nations Command, get a briefing from uh, the head of the U.S. Uh, uh, command in uh, in uh, South Korea. So is uh, is this going to be in the agenda tomorrow? Because there was talk that there is a, it will be part of. Um, the talks tomorrow, the um, permanent peacekeeping uh, arrangements, sir, or it's not a major Well, that could be an option. Huh? That could be an option. The uh, 16 uh, nations uh, could be converted into a peacekeeping uh, mm. force. Huh? So, maraming, ano, pero yung option na, ano, going to war, no, which I don't believe is uh, mm. a likely outcome of the summit. Ano? Uh, ang isang, maganda, uh, isang magandang turnout nga ron, especially if one of the decisions is that uh, ma-terminate na yung uh, armistice, mm -hmm. meaning uh, magkakaroon na ng peace agreement, eh di madidisband na ngayon itong United Nations Command. So ang daming mm. uh, Pwedeng gawin ng 16 countries na yan. Like one is 
uh, observers o yung observers nung ano nung nung o peacekeeping force the other one is they can help in the rehabilitation of uh, say North Korea which happened actually uh, after the uh, Korean War no in 1953 so af- after the war yung troops natin we, we did not withdraw from uh, South Korea we stayed there for two more years mm-hmm. no uh, to help in the reconstruction and rehabilitation of South Korea Kayo sir as a keen observer ano ang expectation niyo from the meeting tomorrow do you think it's just an ice oh, icebreaker or para I, to start a long process I have very high expectations mm. because for one thing no si yung well if uh, you read the mind of uh, Kim Kim Jong Un ano uh, ano na eh para uh, parang na corner na siya eh, no meaning mm. uh, the uh, the uh, yung nangyari ngayon na na may mga sanctions sa kanila no uh, apparently it's working out so he, he he may have been pushed into a corner a corner mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. at saka may ang, so uh, ang threat ngayon diyan is both from within and from without uh, meaning from the outside yun nga yung US led uh, coalition force and then from the inside syempre yung mga tao. So alam mo isang effect nitong summit eh you will uh, raise the expectations of uh, the North Korean North Korea. people. And I'm sure many of them wouldn't want to go back to where uh, to the status quo. Because it, it's really a tough uh, they're having a tough time there. So, so ang- up uh, one possible effect ambassador in expect nyo ba na baka uh, si Trump i mean if you read if you're able to read Kim Jong Un's mind then you can also read maybe Trump's mind will he uh, <laughs> uh, will he go for, american uh, developments <laughs> <laughs> no at least will he go for will he be patient enough to wait for a process or will he go for a deal what is your reading I ano, ano to siguro uh, if anything positive comes out of it yung mga ano na yung mga officials na ng both sides mm. ang uh, magwa work out nung terms nung terms nila no say for example yung of course ang gusto ng uh, US eh, yung dismantling ano ano nga nung, ng nuclear, nuclear arsenal yes nila, nuclear arsenal ngayon sa North Korea, eh, hindi naman sila papayag na walang kapalit yun. So ano ho ang ina-expect nilang kapalit? Well, be, well, they could ask for the ano, removal of uh, the U.S. troops sa ano, South Korea. But ako ang nakikita, ang, you know, ang maganda example sa history natin, ano? I mean, sa history ng ng US no yung uh, siguro kung magagaya yung Cuban crisis formula okay. you know what happened eh? di ba nagstation ng ano ang ang USSR ng missile sa Cuba correct oh. in the early 60s pero eventually it was dismantled pero pumayag ang Cuba mm-hmm. on the condition na uh, wag na silang ano basta wag na sila i-threat ng ano ng US no mm-hmm. mga ganun. so in exchange for that guarantee so ang Cuba pumayag na i-dismantle na nun. so merong example sa history I see kaya sir mataas yung expectation niyo also because of the role you were saying uh, in our email of South Korea's current leader Yeah. Can you t- t- talk to us a bit about you know what he did to soften the ground? Oh. Well, uh masyado ang focus na makasi sa ano no uh, sa president ng ano ng South Korea pero it's actually the the party behind him. He is not the author of the Sunshine Policy. If you recall it's he belongs to the party of Kim Dae-jung. So si si Kim Kelpa yung panahon pa ni 
Tayo pa ni best friend niya sa political leaders natin eh. Si ano eh, si Ninoy Aquino eh. Because they were, they were both exiles in the US eh. Pero yun na nga, yung uh, nung nakabalik si Kim Dae-jung eventually, he ran for president and he won. Ang, ang cornerstone ng foreign policy niya is this uh, sunshine policy warming up with uh, North Korea. No, and then uh, the second time that the party won si No Mo Hyun, yung president nung kailan ba until uh, 1988. So Democratic Party din. Pinursurin uli niya yan, yung sunshine policy. And now eto ngayon yung president, kayo president Un Jae-in. So same party pa rin siya. So the pinurso pa rin niya yung party line which is the sunshine policy warming up with the with the north at saka pursuing itong unification of the Korean Peninsula. So there was so, a, yeah. although he, ngayon siya ang lumalabas na broker but then uh, ano yun yun talaga ang party line eh he, he's just being true to what the party stands for. So may con ambassador, there was a confluence of events. Parang the timing was right apart from yes. apart from the push from South Korea. Uh, um, the sanctions worked, you were saying earlier. In, uh, yes. But that means Kim Jong-un also wants to project himself as a very reasonable or a pragmatic leader. That's true. That, that's true, but... Uh... but you can also say na no he, he might also be after the preservation of uh, uh, his uh, regime no mm. kasi ayo din naman niya yung mangyari na ano alam mo na you're familiar with the threat of uh, uh, bolton no? na baka uh, the, the us can go the uh, the libya way no when they had this arrangement uh, with uh, ano Gaddafi for the ano nga, denuclearization ng Libya. Tapos eh, eventually <laughs> inatak nila ang, ano, ang Libya. So they've seen that. Again, uh, they are learning from uh, history. No? So kaya yun ang ayaw nilang mangyari. Uh, of course, ang concern nila is ma yung survival ng, ng regime, ng leadership I na yun. Uh, Ambassador, what about China? China is very close to North Korea. In fact, the plane used by Kim Jong-un to go to Singapore was lent by China. I, what is going to be China's role? I don't want to be left out of this process, di ba, sir? Uh, that's true, no? Kasi ang, ang concern din kasi ng China rito, no? Uh, although, you, you can say na parang Cold War mentality pa ito, no? Kasi yung, alam mo, may security, parang itong allied forces, ano, from Japan down to the Philippines hanggang Australia, para tayong merong uh, ano, security umbrella from from the US, eh, na medyo na puncture yung umbrella na yun when the US withdrew from Subic and other military bases sa, ano, sa Philippines. So, yung so what I'm saying is, uh, you have uh, military U.S. Uh, bases sa Japan, sa North Korea, down to Philippines and Australia, no? Before, so ngayon medyo sa gitna, medyo nabutas, no? Kasi nga nawala na ng walang presence ng U.S. sa Philippines. So ngayon parang sinabi mo na in case na sabihin ni ano Kim Jong Un in exchange for the nuclearization umalis kay diyan sa South Korea o oh, edi eh, parang sinabi mo na umalis sa Subic base ang ano ang US so of course ang unang-unang magwo-worry diyan is uh, Japan kasi kung umalis ang US diyan edi eh, yung security umbrella eh mm -hmm. mawawala na naman so when we say security umbrella parang may threat from the other side which is ito na nga, yun sa, yun sa China. No? Kaya merong mga ibang analysts dyan na sinasabi nila na maybe the reason why naging adventurous ang China dyan sa South China Sea is 
because the the U.S. left their bases in the Philippines, or we our our leaders you know, during that time, 1992, as the U.S. or terminated our basis agreement with the U.S. So that could be one uh, permutation, you know, itong, itong mga outcome. Pero, but, yes. but hopefully, hindi, hindi gagawing uh, negotiating uh, chip yung ano nga, withdrawal ng mm. yes, sa, sa Korea. There are 28,000 U.S. Uh, uh, troops uh, in, in Korea. In South Korea. And, South Korea. Yes. So, sir, you, in the beginning of our talk, you said... This is you have high expectations. This is going to be to bring peace, not only to the Philippines but to Southeast Asia and and, and the region. So uh, and opportunities also business opportunities, especially business opportunities. Like what, sir? Like uh, whether positive or negative. Siempre yung ano yung mga uh, investors would be looking very positively at. Uh, North Korea, no? Kasi uh, well-educated naman yung ano, mga North Koreans. But, and of course, uh, yung ano, no? Yung uh, workforce nila. Uh, although, I would say na video negative ito sa Philippines. Why? Because, uh, if you look at this, uh, you know, there is this uh, Kaesong International Park. Sa, it's near uh, the border with South Korea, no? yung, yung, uh, near Pamunjong. Okay. Uh, there are about 124, uh, before, no? There were, kasi sarado ngayon yun eh. There were about 124 uh, South Korean companies operating in Kaesong Industrial okay. Park. And uh, alam mo kung magkano yung minimum wage doon? $67 per month. Per month? Per month. Ano, magkano ang minimum wage sa Philippines? Ngayon, 510 pesos a day? Wait, or, at least in the city. Uh, about 400 US dollars a month. Yes, ang, ang baba naman yan, sir. Ah. Uh, iba kasi yung system dun eh. Ah. Uh, dahil yung mga... The, yung, mga yung South Korea yung companies, nagbabayad sa government. So parang yung... Hmm yung government ng employer. So, maraming subsidies yung mga workers. So, kaya maliit yung nare-receive nila na, mm. na take-home pay. Because marami silang subsidies. But then, yun din ang isang ano, dapat pag-isipan din natin, ano, yung, uh, yung attractiveness. Uh, say, there is a thought, there is a peace agreement and of uh, um, karon ng unification magiging very attractive ang North Korea as a place for investments because primarily yung cheap labor and then yung resources mas maraming resources ang North Korea kaya South Korea so it's going kaya nga yung yeah. ano no yung during the ano well immediately after the Korean War yung pinapedal na information ng ano ng North Korea eh mas mayaman sila kesa sa South Korea, which was true because uh, mas marami silang resources eh, kesa sa South Korea. So But then, of course, uh, everything changed. So in as yumama. Yes. So in a way, it's positive in terms of peace, but also it will provide competition. North Korea, when it when this happens, will provide also competition uh, ambassador no, to the Philippines and other Southeast Asian countries. That's correct. But do you... Do you do you trust Kim Jong Un? I mean, this is really a dramatic change from his old old persona. Well, uh, ano nga eh? So, the way I see it is, uh, di ba? Uh, first, uh, they agreed. Trump and uh, Kim agreed to have this summit, and then nagwithdraw ang US, US ano? Yes. Withdraw si Trump, pero Si Kim still uh, ano still pursued itong ano nga uh, well he said uh, he's still interested in having this summit so yun lang indication na ano na may change of heart na siya gusto niya talaga na magkaroon na ng resolution itong ano na itong gusot na ito yes sir
this is all very interesting. And sir, um, before we close this interview, pwede ko tayong dumako sa domestic naman, sir, Philippines, South Korea. Um, a, a final question. Uh, you're aware, sir, of the controversial kiss, the kiss of President Duterte kissed uh, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, an OFW married to a, a Filipina married to a Korea. Sir, anong cultural sensitivities Jan, I mean, when you know you you know South Korea very well, how would they have how did how would they have reacted to this? Uh, uh, I will put it in context, ha? Huh? Oh, sige, sir. Uh, con context <laughs> meaning uh, yung ano na yon yung uh, yung uh, meeting na yon is between the president and the Filipino community sa Correct. Korea yes. in that uh, no hall. So, walang mga South Koreans doon. If ever, yung mga South Korean citizens na nandun, yung mga security forces siguro. No? So, kaya, and then the other thing is, hindi naman na-cover yan sa, ano, sa Korean media. Now, again, sa, I'll put it uh, in another context. Ang Korean society ngayon has become a multicultural society already. They are aware that there are differences uh, in uh, culture, no? including uh, how we greet each other. Now, like for example, in Korea, ang greeting doon, eh, ano, nagbabaw sila. Parang Japan. Uh, mas, parang Japan. Mas mm -hmm. malalay pang baw mo kung yung, <laughs> yung uh, kaharap mo, eh, mas mataas ang ranggo kesa sa'yo. Okay. O mas uh, nakakatanda. O mas senior kesa sa'yo. Na ganun. So, ganun ang greeting nila. But they are also aware that uh, in other cultures, iba ang greeting. No? Mm. Like yung iba nang chishake ng hands, iba nang bebeso beso, and so on. So, for them, uh, they they are not offended sa mga, ano, sa, if they see such, uh, such gestures uh, within Korea. No? For as long, of course, na, na yun, na mga uh, 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 foreigners are involved. Yeah. So Not, yeah. They're more, multi they're more multicultural now because of the influx of migrant workers, right, sir? That's right. That's correct. And, and also, During my time, eh, mga, ano, eh, mga 50,000. I heard now they're as big as 95,000. Eh. Foreign workers in Korea? No, uh, no. Philippines lang. Oh, Filipinas just the Philippines. Lang. So, yeah. What about the other? Ang tourist, yeah. I think nung during my time, ang umaaverage sila ng 10 million tourists a year. Mm. So that was three years back. So ngayon, it should be more than that. Okay. And also you said it wasn't really covered by the Korean media. It was more covered by the Philippine media. Yung yeah. the event with the OFWs, the kiss, which became controversial here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Okay. Uh, so, sir, as I cannot I... comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, sir. So, anyway, uh, you've given us um, a very positive outlook about the June 12 meeting between President Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un. Maybe any any final word from you, Ambassador, before we close this interview. Uh, I, I think your audience, eh, ano, mga, mga Filipinos ang audience mo, no? Mainly, yes, sir. We have also uh, foreigners, but mainly it's Filipinos. Oh, well, of course, uh, my message to Filipinos that uh, they should follow very closely itong development sa Korean Peninsula mm -hmm. because uh, we will be affected in all aspects, no? Whether uh, social, cultural, uh, military or people-to-people -people, uh, mm -hmm. contact. Malaki ang magiging uh, effect uh, sa atin ito. But more importantly, uh, ang isang magandang effect dito sa region, now I'm talking about the, 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 the region, ay eh yung uh, benefits that peace and security uh, mm -hmm. uh, this summit can bring can uh, bring about. Like for example, in my one of uh, before I retired, I was the Director General for the Philippine uh, ASEAN Office. You know? mm -hmm. And one of the uh, 
con uh, meetings that we were we are hosting there is the ASEAN Regional Forum, wherein North Korea is a member. So we often uh, engage them in a dialogue together with uh, the 10 ASEAN member countries, plus the uh, 10 dialogue partners, including the United States no? and at saka six, uh, six other countries in the region. So I, uh, I, I think Ms. Kiang ASEAN uh, will be watching very closely uh, on the developments of this uh, summit because it will impact on uh, the uh, regional uh, security arrangements also, not only in uh, Southeast Asia, but uh, also the region in general, in the Pacific. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So all eyes will be on, Sing in, on Singapore tomorrow where uh, President Trump will meet uh, Kim Jong-un, a first among a first in the history of sitting uh, U.S. presidents and North Korean leaders. Thank you, Ambassador Cruz, and we look forward to talking to you again. And thank you very much to all our listeners. Thank you.